So we're here at the 2014 Kineticon, and I'm here, of course, with the famous Rob Paulson. Now, I wanted to ask you, what was your first, uh, you know, what was the first time that you thought about doing voice acting for a career? Um, well, honestly, Christian, I think it was when I had moved to Los Angeles and was doing regular episodic television. I loved cartoons like everybody else, but I didn't necessarily go to L.A. with that intention. And then, fortunately, I got the uh, opportunity as a result of a general audition to work on um, G.I. Joe and Transformers in the mid-80s and found out how much I enjoyed that and began working with people like Alan Oppenheimer and thought, wow, this is uh, really lovely to be able not, not only not to be uh, uh, limited by the way I look, because there are a million average looking white guys with SAG cards in LA, but to get to work with world class talents like Mr. Oppenheimer and Frank Welker and Peter Cullen, and, and, uh, and it didn't take me long to realize that that's the direction I wanted to go. That's great. Now, of course, now we know that uh, you're back for Ninja Turtles yeah. as Donatello. Now, how has it been different for you that you are now voicing a different character? Of course, we know that you did Raphael in the original series right. and recently heard that you guys are nominated for an Emmy. So how does it feel about all that? It's incredibly exciting. Um, the cool thing is that purple, my new purple bandana goes great with my white hair. Uh, I, you know, I, what can you say? To get, if, first of all, nobody ever had any idea, including Peter, uh, um, uh, uh, just lost my train of thought, uh, um, the, the creators of Ninja Turtles, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. Nobody had an idea that Ninja Turtles would become Ninja frickin' Turtles. But then to get another shot at riding in the turtle van 25 years later, uh, it's amazing. And arguably the show is as successful, if not more successful now than it was then. So that, coupled with the fact that we just got nominated with a primetime Emmy, uh, for a primetime Emmy, is, it's just beyond icing on the cake. I, I'm just so excited, um, and people still love Ninja Turtles. Get a lot of folks your age who watched the original, and they were kind of ambivalent about the new one, and then they watched the new one, and they're going, "Oh my God, this is great!" Yeah, I mean, it's and it's good that you um, you know you came back for it. Yeah. Now, is there anyone else in the cast that kind of were were pushed from the original in terms of production and directors and writers or actors or anything like that? Not that I know of. I do know that Peter Hastings was one of the executive producers for the first two seasons, and Peter was one of the executives on Pinky and the Brain. So um, it was great to work with Peter again on a new project to which he brought an enormous amount of skill. Uh, none, although I have to say that they have done an episode or two and probably will do a couple more where we brought the original Turtles back to meet the new Turtles. So I got to play Raphael and Donatello in the same episode and that's always great getting to hang out with the old group. Yeah. Now, if, let's say for example, if Pinky, Yako, and Donatello met Rob, what would they be saying to you? Let's say the first couple words. What would they say about you? And uh, let's uh, let's see what the fans would you know see what they would say about that. They would well, Yakko and Pinky and who else? Don Donatello meeting Raphael. Meeting Rob. You, meeting, meeting oh, you. Meeting, meeting me. Yes. Oh, they would say, "How the hell did you get so lucky to get a job like this, you idiot?" You, it's a good thing. And, there, and then Raphael would say, "It's a good thing you can do this for a living because you're sure not qualified to be a turtle." Um, and Pinky would say, "Hey, Gad, Rob, Narf." <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, um, what do you think about like Netflix and YouTube kind of bringing some of the older work oh. to the younger generation now? Is that part of the build-up, of course, for the new show? Because people are like, what is yeah. this coming from? Yeah, it's very cool. As a matter of fact, I'm doing proprietary stuff now from for DreamWorks that is being uh, um, produced specifically just for Netflix. So certainly the platforms on which people choose to purchase their entertainment is changing. And there's a lot of stuff being made just for Amazon, Netflix, and Hulu. My son doesn't even have cable or satellite. He just watches Hulu. And so the, the industry is definitely changing. Um, uh, and Animaniacs, I think, is on Amazon Prime now. So that's cool. I, I'm, I'm grateful that they keep our stuff alive. And, and it's good stuff. Animaniacs is si sort of timeless. You don't have to be 11 to watch it. There are a lot of 40-year-olds who love Animaniacs, and it's just really good stuff. Yeah. Now, um for the fans and like what can they be anticipating for you uh, as a voice actor maybe even doing other things um, in the next couple of years well certainly more Ninja Turtles uh, we got picked up for season four and we haven't even finished season three yet so that's gonna be around a while uh, I'm doing a lot of stuff as I said for DreamWorks and Netflix uh, more Disney stuff um, I 
I'm always, just luckily, I always got my fingers into something. People can keep a, an eye on me if they want to via Twitter, and my Twitter handle is at Yakko Pinky, Y-A-K-K-O-P-I-N-K-Y, all lowercase. Um, they can listen to my podcast, which I do once or twice a month. It's called uh, Talkin' Tunes, T-A-L-K-I-N apostrophe T-O-O-N-S, and you can find that on uh, on iTunes or my website, which is robpaulsonlive.com, and I interview everybody whom you folks would want to hear from. Not Maurice and Mark Hamill and uh, Tress McNeil, Nancy Cartwright, Dan Castellaneta, they've all been on my podcast. Hey, Gad, this is Pinky, and I'd like to thank you personally for watching Abstract Framework. Narf!